We've been talking about different interface subcommands on switches for a while now. And in this video, we're going to add a couple more. But in the second half of the video, we're going to talk about how to revert back to the original default settings. It's pretty cool. So let's do it. First, the point of this video is to discuss a couple of important but not terribly complex interface subcommands having to do with enabling interfaces and documenting interfaces and moving around the command line interface. So that's just kind of making sure you know what you need to know for the exam. But then we'll talk about how to revert back to the default settings with the no command and the default command. Again, useful for the exam, but also very useful for real life and understand what's really going on with Cisco iOS. As always, hang around to the end. At the end, I'll give you some advice, like you're in my study group, where to focus your study after finishing this video, in particular, what to use here at the Network Upskill channel for further study, and what you can use from the official cert guide. All right, let's go. First to review, let's talk about the subcommands that we've talked about related to this chapter so far. First, there was the speed command, which, say, on a 10, 100, 1000 interface, had options for 10, 100, and 1000, and also for auto, which is the default. So speed auto, meaning auto-negotiate the speed. And similarly, we have duplex. So duplex question mark shows us the options there, full and half, and then auto again to auto-negotiate that setting. And then in the most recent video, we talked about auto-mdix. And interestingly, the command syntax for that is mdix auto, which is the default to say do it, or no mdix auto, which is the command to say don't do automatic mdix. Now, new commands for this video. In interface mode, we've got the description command. So description question mark tells us what it's about. It's just 200 characters of text that you can have spaces and special characters in to document the purpose of the interface. So here, maybe I type description, local port connects to switch SW2 and press enter and it just gives me a new line and accepts the command. All right, now later if I wanna see what the description is, of course you can do a show running config command but some of the other commands also display the description. For instance, show interfaces displays the description in the third line. Show interfaces status shows a shorthand version of the description, basically the first 18 or so characters right here, but it then truncates the rest of it. So depending on you know, what where the important information in your description is, it may or may not be useful to look at it that way. But another handy command you can try is show interfaces description, which interestingly puts the description column in the far right and doesn't truncate so that if you really want to see the whole description, you can see it out there. Next up is one of the most powerful and commonly used commands in iOS. It is the shutdown command in interface mode. So here's the idea, interface whatever, in this case gigabit 107, and you type the command shutdown and press enter. And what you've told iOS is for this interface, you want to administratively disable it. That is, stop it. Quit sending light or electricity on the port. The link will fail. You're not using it anymore. It's down, down, down. All right. So we see a couple of the log messages that appeared after I issued the shutdown command in lab. And it even says the state is changed to administratively down, change state to down. So let's talk about those states for a moment. But the link is now unusable by choice of the network engineer. So first off, if we go and look at some of the show commands, show interfaces, there is a pair of related status codes. So we're going to talk about this a lot in this video and the next one. So this first line of output says the interface, Gigabit Ethernet 107 in this case, is first status code and then second status code. Interface is whatever, line protocol is whatever else. So those go together, and when it says administratively down, that simply means you configured a shutdown command. So it's down because you configured it to be so. Whenever it's administratively down here, it's always listed as line protocol is down. So those go together, and that's expected because we just configured shutdown. Now, if you go do a show interfaces status, there's a status column, but here there is a one-word status word not a pair of status words. 
So this pair of administratively down and down is not reflected here. It's a one word status called disabled in this case. Disabled means you typed the shutdown command. All right, so two different ways to see the status, the two word way and the one word way. By the way, this command at the top, it also told us the one word status disabled here. That's the same word you would expect to see in the one, the one word column of status here in show interfaces status. So what you want to make sure you remember through repetition and just memorizing it is if I shut down an interface, I expect to see administratively down here and disabled in show interfaces status. Now, more broadly, you'll see different status codes. So the one we just talked about is administratively down and protocol status down in show interfaces or disabled, as we just saw, in show interfaces status. But there are other combinations when the interface is not shut down. In fact, the one we want is for the two-word status code to be up and up, meaning the interface is up and working, which in the single word status, interestingly enough, Cisco uses the word connected for that case. The next new command to talk about is the interface range command. So it's actually a global command that moves you into interface mode. However, with this range keyword, it means that I'm gonna type what's basically a range of interface IDs. Notice it says 1011-15. So it's interfaces 1011, 1012, et cetera, through 1015. Now, what does that mean? First off, we get a little different prompt here to remind us this is now a mode for a range of interfaces. And then these commands that we type next are applied to all those interfaces. Now, what gets stored in the config file is not different, but it's applying all these, com or these commands to all the interfaces. For instance, the description will be added to all five interfaces. The shutdown command will be added to all five interfaces. In fact, when you press enter after the shutdown command, we see five log messages, one for each of those interfaces showing up here to tell us that the state has been changed to administratively down. All right, so it's just a way to more easily configure a bunch of interfaces all at once. And to show you the result of that, the show running config command, if we do that and then don't begin listing the output until um, interface 11 shows up, notice, it has that description command, it's got a shutdown command. The next one, port 12, description and shutdown, and so on. It's just repeated those commands throughout here. And the show interfaces status shows evidence of the same description on all five of those interfaces as well. By the way, for those of you that do have the books, I hope you've been enjoying the organization of the videos that match the books. If you've been thinking about adding the books, if you would use the link here or the QR code and click the product link there, then it turns out if you buy at Amazon or CiscoPress.com, they end up giving me a few dollars back from your sale at no additional cost to you. It's a great way to support the channel, and I'd very much appreciate it. All right, back to the content. Now let's talk about how to revert configuration back to its original state after you've configured some of these commands. So for instance, you've learned about the description command, its default is to have no description at all, but here's one that we added. Shutdown on switches, the default is to not be shut down, which is the no shutdown command. Here we've configured the non-default value, which is to disable it, that is the shutdown command. Again, the speed command, the default is auto. Duplex command, the default is auto. We've configured non-default values there. And the output from the show running config command, by the way, this command, show running config, interface, whatever, will show me just the config for that interface. It shows me these four non-default values here. Now, how do I know those default values? Well, from experience. For each of the commands, you learn them, and then you learn what their default values are, and you get experience with them. But you do get some um, affirmation about what the defaults are and are not from iOS itself. So I'm going to walk you through that. So here are the values that are, say, pre-configured in some example that I'll use here. Now, if I wanted to revert back to the original default setting or to some other setting, here's what I could do. So here's a, here's a list of the commands that we just saw on the left column in that example. So if the port is shut down and I want to go to the other state, so it's one of two states, administratively 
disabled with the shutdown command. And if I want to go to administratively enabled, I issue the no shutdown command. And I know that again from experience and reading and that kind of thing. However, if I wanted to get rid of this description, I'd just use the no description command in interface config mode. I don't have to type the description text out here, just no description. And iOS says, hey, you don't want a description? We'll get rid of the description. The speed and duplex commands, they have several options here, but no matter what you had configured, if you do a no speed with no parameters or no duplex with no parameters, each of these commands respectively reverts back to the default setting. I know from experience that the default settings are auto. So that's a way to go back to some default settings with these commands. So let's take a look at that again with this example. We've configured beforehand those four settings, but now in interface mode, we did a no shutdown. It says enable it. No description to remove the description, no speed, and no duplex to revert back to the defaults on those. Now we see something interesting at the bottom. If we do this show running config interface gig 107, the interface ID doesn't really matter, but it's that same old interface we've been working with here. It shows us the interface ID, but no commands. So here's, it's not a secret, but it's something you have to get used to. The show running config command in Cisco iOS lists non-default settings, almost always. So the rule is show running config shows non-defaults so that the absence of a command implies that a setting is a default setting. Let me let that sink in. The absence of a command implies it's a default setting. So there are no subcommands. So the duplex is set to default. The speed is set to default. The description is set to default. The shutdown state is the default of no shutdown. All right. If you don't see any subcommands, everything is in its default state. So it's very handy for you to know what those are. It'll help you through your life working with iOS. Guess what? You can do pretty much the same thing with a command called default. So imagine we've got that same switch. We've got the same four non-default settings here on interface gig 107, and we want to revert back to all default settings, but we're not going to use the no command. We're going to use the default command. So here's the deal. We've got those four commands in the left-hand column configured as we just saw to revert back to the default. Default space shutdown as an interface subcommand, which says set the shutdown command to its default setting, which is no shutdown. So it enables the interface. Don't shut it down. Have it be up. Default description. We want the default description state, which is to not have a description. Default speed. The default speed state, which is auto, auto negotiate it. Default duplex, also to auto negotiate duplex. For instance, get into interface gig 107 and default shutdown, default description, speed, and duplex, as you see here, reverts those back to their default setting, whatever they are. You may have memorized it or not, but iOS will know what the default is. So that now when you do a show running config command and display the interface subcommands, there are none to list because iOS doesn't list non-default settings in the output of show run. It only lists, uh, sorry, it doesn't list default settings. It only lists non-default settings in the output of show running config. Now, one more step here with the default command. There's this one really cool option. Let's just say we once again got these non-default values configured on gig 107. And let's say we want to get rid of all four of those. So we could do just as we saw with the default command four different times or with the no command four different times as we saw a few minutes ago. Or you could use this one global command, default interface gig 107. What does that mean? As a, default, as a command in global config mode, it says set all the interface subcommands on this interface, set them to their default settings. It's a way to basically reset everything in the config for an interface rather than laboriously doing it yourself. And we even get this message from iOS, interface gig 107 set to default config. 
Then if you get out of config mode and do a show run again, there it is once again. It's all gone, but you didn't have to do repeated default or no commands to get rid of it all. You just cleaned up the interface config with just this one command. So where do you go from here with this topic? First off, you could get in lab and just on your own, open up Packet Tracer and try the shutdown command and the interface range command, things like that. Works just fine, and it's a great way to practice. But you're going to use the shutdown and no shutdown command a lot for other labs as well, but I'm not going to give you a separate lab for that. Additionally, the matching section in the book is useful for review. Give it two or three days, open it up, spend five minutes reading that. It'll be a great review and reminder of what you learned here in this video. But I do want to give you a formal lab, and this is geared for those of you that do have the books. So if you have the books, you have the rights to download and use the Pearson Simulator Lite version for Volume 1. So what is that? First, there's a paid Pearson CCNA simulator. That's not it. What this is, this SimLite is a free subset of the paid simulator, and you can use it for free if you have the books. So you'd open up the books and look in the introduction and find the instructions on how to download that. But I'm going to have a separate video about this lab exercise, like usual for lab exercises. And I'll point you at how to get to the simulator, download it, install it, and do these short skill builder lab exercises. They're about 10 steps, so they're pretty quick. You can do them in five minutes once you get used to the user interface. I'm going to demo the lab called Interface Settings 1, and then just point you at Interface Settings 2 for you to do, and it reviews some of the commands we've been looking at here of late in the videos. Then, as always, use that matching book section for something, and in this case, I think it's best used just for review, but give it a couple of days. Don't read it right away. So as I mentioned on the left, click there to see the video about getting you started in that Pearson Sim Light lab. And on the right, you can click for that next instructional video, which may not be out till next week. So keep an eye out for that. Hey, thanks for hanging out. I'll talk to you soon.